Hey guys, Brian Victory 4x4, back working on the Tundra. Today I'm going to show you how to install our skid plates. That's going to be our front skid, transmission slash transfer case skid, as well as gas tank skid. Now you'll notice it gives you a pretty good coverage underneath the bottom of your truck, protect all those vulnerable areas while you're on the trail. We offer them in 7 gauge steel, like these, or quarter inch aluminum. That is for the front skid, transmission transfer case skid, gas tank skids are steel only guys. They're way too big to be playing with aluminum. We cost a ton of money and we don't want to turn them into a taco. So anyways, let's show you how to install them. So before we get started, I want to talk to you guys about something real quick. This truck has a three inch lift and with most three inch lifts, you're going to see they have aluminum spacers here to actually shim the diff down. Now, if you go and put our skid on without these additional spacers, you're actually going to run into clearance issues where our skid actually is going to interfere with the bottom mounts of your diff. So you're going to want to pick this up if you have a zero to three inch kit that is the shims for the diff in here. If you're not sure if you have this or not, check with your installation instructions on the lift or give your lift company a call and ask them. Now I'm not talking about the big drop bracket that comes way down here and you know like the seven inch lift stuff. I'm not talking about that. We do not have a skid that works for that. So this is the zero to three inch crowd right here. If you don't have a lift or if you don't have these spacers, you do not need this kit. So anyways, let's get started. So first I'm going to go ahead and loosely install the transmission slash transfer case skid plate. And what I'm going to do is put it kind of in place because the front skid is going to come over and overlap over this one. So you have a smooth skidding surface as opposed to if you were to put the in front skid engine skid on first. So this skid is pretty easy to install. We're going to be using the longer bolts that come in the installation kit, washer and a nut, and they're actually just going to come up through this cross member and then bolt through the top. I'm going to snug those up, do it on the other side. So if you're using a TRD front skid and you're going to use our transmission slash transfer case skid in the back, this is going to go up against this cross member and then from there your skid is going to overlap it. So you may if you already have that installed, you're going to have to loosen it up so you can get this between the cross member and your skid and then bolt it back up. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and let this jack down, grab the front skid, and we will get this put together. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into place. Remember, I'm going to overlap over the transfer case skid. So when it comes up, it's going to go like that. If you have a lift on your truck and you need the spacer kit, don't forget to put the spacers in. The shorter spacer is actually going to go on this transfer case skid between the cross member and the skid. So it's going to go skid, skid, spacer, cross member. If you do not have this, remember you don't need to do any of this, you just use the standard hardware. All of the hardware that comes with the spacer kit is just extended hardware. Same size bolt, everything. These thread in right into the cross member, right into the factory locations here, then we take your factory skid off. So I'm going to go ahead and jack this up into place. Spacer on top, spacer on top. So once you have these started, we can go ahead and go underneath the truck and get the two working together there. So we're going to have to fish this nut inside this cross member so that we can bolt them together. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You can go right through here or you can go through the top, drop it down. Okay, got that one started. Now I'm going to do the other side. So here's a quick pro tip and make it a little easier if you actually put those nuts in the cross member before you put the two skid plates up. It is doable to get it up there and fish it around. I had a little more trouble on this side. I had to use a pick to kind of get it in there. Otherwise, not that bad. So now I'm going to go ahead and get a socket and uh, tighten everything up. So I'm going to use a 5 8 inch socket here and an 11 16 wrench up top. I'm going to hold that there. 
Tighten up both sides. So using a 5 16 Allen, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up. You shouldn't need to use a wrench to hold the nuts that are up inside the frame because they're a serrated flange nut, so they actually bite and come down. And if they are spinning a little bit, you can fish your finger up in there just enough to hold it to where it'll bite. Using a 12 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Now all you have to do is put in this door. So this door is so that you can access your oil filter so that when you do an oil change, you don't have to pull the skid down. Over here, you'll see this little notch out right here. That actually is for the oil drain that's up here so that you don't have to pull this down to change your oil. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little panel here, put it up into place using the button head bolt and flange nuts. Put that on there. Reach around the back side, saw your knot. Now we're going to use a 3 16 Allen and go ahead and tighten this up. Now we're on to the gas tank skids. So let's talk about gas tank skids. The Toyota Tundra has a few different options. Two of the options that we offer skids for are the 38 gallon and the 26 gallon. Now, you're gonna see how large the 38 gallon tank skid is. The 26 gallon tank is about that much. It's a substantially smaller skid. This thing's pretty heavy. We only offer it in steel because it needs to be pretty rigid. So if you put the weight of the truck on this thing, it holds up and it doesn't bend and become a giant taco. So anyways, installation is gonna be very similar between the two. As we go, I'm gonna install the 38 gallon, but as we go, I will tell you the differences for the 26 gallon, so that when you go to do your install, you'll be set to go. Easiest way to figure out which way is the front, there is kind of a bump out right here. And that guy is gonna be the front of the skid on both the 38 gallon and the 26 gallon. So, about right here, I'm gonna roll this under and we'll get going. So on the 38 gallon tank, we're gonna go ahead and install this upper bracket. This is actually gonna support the back corner of the skid. On the 26 gallon tank, it's a little different. The bracket's actually just gonna come up into the frame and we're gonna drill a hole in the bottom of the frame to clamp that bracket. This one, we can just install using this button head and this washer. And throw this up here into place. Put that through there. Reach around the other side of the frame. Next, we're gonna put this half inch bolt in so you have a washer. On this side, on the back side, you're going to use this large washer followed by a half inch washer and a flange nut. And we're going to leave that loosely installed for now. Jack the truck up and let's put the skid on. These brackets on the gas tank skid are going to need to be drilled here and here. If you already have our sliders, it's already going to use the holes that we already drilled for the sliders. If you have our sliders and these holes are drilled, you can pretty much skip the whole process in this installation where we put this, well, everything up, mock it up, mark the holes to drill, and then take it all down. You can actually install these first through here so you can reach up, then go ahead and install the gas tank skid and you won't have to take it back down. But anyways, follow along and then I'll tell you where you can pick up from. So you're going to take this larger triangle block this is on the 38 gallon tank. 26 gallon tank will not have this mount. It's gonna come up here and bolt through this cross member collar, like so. Then the gas tank skid can bolt on there. If you're installing the 26 gallon tank, you're gonna have two brackets that look very similar to this. It's going to install up and into one of the bolts around your bearing, your drive shaft carrier bearing here. And then this is the secondary mount for the 38 gallon tank. It's gonna look just like this. It's gonna go from this spot up to this cross member, which we'll install now. I'm gonna go ahead and fish this up around the drive shaft. It's gonna go up here and go through this hole on this cross member. Then you can fish your hand up over the top, like so. 
Then we're going to take another one and bolt it right through here. All right, back over here a couple minutes later, we have the gas tank skid mostly mocked up to where it needs to go to where we can actually mark and drill these. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull these up in here, mark your frame, drill it, both spots. This bracket's the same, so either one can be used here. Once you have your hole drilled, we're actually going to have to take the whole skid, drop it all back out of the way, and we can start bolting that on. So let me go ahead and uh, drop the skid down. Using the half inch bolts, we're going to go ahead and put these back into the frame. Using a three quarter inch socket, we're going to go ahead and tighten these up. All right, now we'll uh, go ahead and jack this giant casket sized tank skid back up into place. If you don't feel like wrestling this thing in and out a couple of times, what we'll do is in our installation PDF, we'll actually have measurements and a picture showing where you can locate these holes to drill them without having the gas tank skid up into place. So anyways, check that out. So now we're gonna work our way around installing these brackets from the frame to the gas tank skid. I'm gonna do these two mounts as well as the two up here on the frame and then I'll show you how to install the mount that sits in the wheel well over there. All right, so now we'll move back into that wheel well. I'll show you how to put that mount in. So this is the final leg in the rear. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this guy. It's gonna go just like this with this little ear up. It's gonna go on the back side of that mount that we installed earlier. And then it's gonna go down in the gas tank skid and the bolt's gonna come in from the back. One thing I do wanna talk about, if you notice right here, I have a pretty mangled e-brake cable. And what has happened here was, because I am running aftermarket Adelief's with an additional retainer bracket, that bracket and our gas tank bracket actually smashed the cable in between there. So as you see in here, I had a hole here. We used to have the bracket on the front side. We moved it to the back side to kind of alleviate that contact. The problem is, as you articulate and stuff, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're checking clearances like this so that you don't get out on the trail and then realize, whoops, I just smashed my e-brake cable to hell. And we're not responsible for that. You take your own ownership for that, just like I gotta take my own ownership for this. Anyways, so the bracket's gonna go in just like this bolt through there in a nut. Then on the back side of this gas tank skid, we got a hole that comes through and a nut on the back. You can feed the nut up right through this drain hole right here. So now we have the gas tank skid loosely installed. As you can see, I can move it all over the place. We're gonna start tightening things up. Before I take the jack out and release this thing to just be hanging, I'm actually gonna Go ahead and tighten these up here on the frame first and then work my way down. Starting on the frame end, tighten up all the frame brackets, then tighten up the gas tank skin. Using a three quarter inch socket and wrench if needed. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this guy into place. Next, we're gonna use a 732nd Allen to go ahead and tighten up that guy. All right, using a 516 Allen, we're gonna go ahead and tighten up these frame side brackets. So there you go guys, flat bottoms on your truck. Protect that giant gas tank skid if you have a 38 gallon tank. There's no other gas tank skids on the market that don't have bolts hanging down, so there's that. You can also get your transfer case, your transmission, and your engine all armored up. Like I said, we offer this in seven gauge steel or quarter inch aluminum. For those, this one is seven gauge steel only. So make sure you check out which tank you have before you buy. And I hope to see you guys on the trail.